The first thing that we do is breathe. And I thought I looked a little insane last week. So we're gonna breathe like this. And we're gonna multitask and find our herb to crush and sniff because we know the breath cleans the organs, you know, helps stimulate them and all of that stuff. And then I still have my, it has a tag on it, my mint from last week. It's looking a little tired, even though I probably needed more water. But the thing is you can still crush it. Oh, and get the essential oils out of it. You know, that's why dried, if you dry your own herbs, you can, it, I mean, they have long use. So the, me the, the uh, what metaphor there is, even if something looks ugly, it doesn't mean it doesn't have great gifts to give. And so that in a way, the dried, the dried mint is more aromatic than the fresh mint. It, um, although that could be because it's a little tired or I squished that one already. But anyway, and now after this, it will go in hot water, steep in hot water. And I will have some mint tea that I will put lemon in. Both of those are in Shakespeare. And the reason I do mint is because I'm saying to start off the year with soothing, you know, soothing herbs. But you can, if you want to be more stimulated, uh, you can use rosemary and some of those more pungent aromatic herbs to clean the brain. And the O oh, that I've talked about, the line of the week for the very first show for the vagus nerve was about the O oh, because it's all one and one begins with the O. Oh. And the other thing is we, this, our second show was honey, again, soothing for the new year. And I found saffron honey at the farmer's market. So of course, saffron is in Shakespeare. That's the crocus. Those are the little purple flowers. But behind me, I've got white roses. So that's the, that's the York, the Yorkist rose and some iris, which is not in Shakespeare named as a flower, but it's a character and mentioned a lot because iris was the goddess of the rainbow. And so that can, that can uh, symbolize the rainbow and, um, and I have still, there's some in the bouquet, and I have a little bit of olive branch left. And so that is peace. The olive branch is peace. You know, you hold out the olive branch. I had a friend whose sister died, sadly, not of COVID this past fall, but um, other respiratory issues and not, not very old either. And because you couldn't touch, because we can't touch right now, she had people pick an olive branch out of a vase as you came in and, and they joined each other. Actually, that makes me cry. They joined each other in the, in, with the olive branch. So, and of course, we in the United States had our inauguration on Wednesday. So as we talked about, it's been a year and this month isn't even over. Uh, we have one more Sunday, one more show in this month and anyway so lady gaga wore this amazing pin that people were saying it's an eagle or it's the mocking jay from hunger games none of that it was a dove of peace holding an olive branch and that's and so we put we posted all the um all the quotes having to do with dove and having to do with peace and having to do with olive as a symbol of peace and the dove is the symbol of peace. And so that, even though I've mentioned it before, it's not been the line of the week, but the line of the week is, and peace proclaims olives of endless age. So that's your line of the week from Sonnet 107. And it does come in handy and should come in handy. And I, it got me a lot, um, it got me thinking a lot about that another, uh, a bunch of other people who, very kindly follow botanical Shakespeare, like New York Shakespeare, who nominated us for an award. We're very grateful for that. And as I said before, I think we're the only ones in the plant and healing Shakespeare space right now. But also um, uh, Heather Tesco at the Tudor Learning Circle. She also has a Tudor con. And we're gonna be talking about a major tutor today. Ooh, a major tutor today. Say that three times fast. And also, no sweat Shakespeare, the Hark Journal. All of us are, are reconnecting people in our own unique and distinct ways with their own 
humanity. Now today, we are going to be talking about the pomegranate. The pomegranate, and I wanted to find you a live pomegranate. I thought they were in season because I saw them in the store last week. Or, I don't know, a few days ago, and then I went yesterday and I couldn't find one. But anyway, I think I, most people know what a pomegranate looks like. And, and we use a different illustration that Sumier did, which I really love, and it didn't make it into the book. But it's on our Catherine of Aragon birthday post. Now, Catherine of Aragon, if you don't know, is, is the first wife of Henry VIII and the longest wife of Henry VIII. She, she lasted for 24 years. And the reason, you know, that it, there was an opportunity for Anne Boleyn to slip in there because, because she wasn't producing a male heir. She did have a number of um, male children who died, one, one lasted a few days, and every, but she had up to 13 pregnancies, and I think seven or 10 are, are recorded as actual, almost coming to term births, um, but miscarriages and all that kind of stuff. And her symbol was the pomegranate, because one of the things it meant historically is, is um, fertility, because it has all those seeds in there. And it always makes me think of like the Titanic when you say something like, this boat will never sink. You're sort of inviting it to sink. And she used the symbol of fertility. Wikipedia will tell you that it was brought to Spain. Catherine of Aragon was Spanish. Um, hence the TV series that's been so popular called The Spanish Princess. And um, she used it as a symbol of fertility because, of course, you know, that's why you married with these countries for not only national alliances, but also to produce offspring that cemented that alliance. So very, very political reasons for that. And she chose this and then she couldn't produce the heir. Now, it also is because... It um, is an antioxidant and it helps uh, increase blood flow. So it's not just a symbol of female fertility. It also seems to enhance or they think it enhances the male performance as well. So, you know, that pomegranate is working, you know, the fire down below, right? Okay, so, so I have a theory that I have nursed for a long time and I did share it. And I'm actually shocked that nobody else has come up with this, but maybe they have and I just haven't seen it. So some of you who are also experts in this area might know or might have seen this theory. But anyway, so the pomegranate, Wikipedia says that it came to Spain in, in the latter part of the 16th century. Not true because she takes the emblem early in the 16th century. She marries Arthur first and he dies around age 14. And she says the marriage was never consummated. And then she marries the younger brother, Henry, who was just smitten with her. She was incredibly beautiful. She was reportedly incredibly beautiful and had very thick red gold hair that went past her, her uh, buttocks, went, went, went uh, very, very long, thick red gold hair. The red gold hair is important. Uh, because Henry also has red gold hair. And this becomes a thing throughout the 16th century of people with red gold hair. And coming from that line, and even in the uh, latter part of the 16th century, the way people, you know, imitate celebrities now, everybody was either dyeing their hair, this red gold, and so saffron was really a big deal because that's how they dyed their hair red gold, or they wore wigs. And so you'll see a lot of paintings. You're like, why does everybody have the same color hair? But here's the thing about that color hair. It can also indicate the RH negative blood type. And with the RH negative blood type comes a huge problem in giving birth. Either the mother or the father has to be RH negative. And if the mother isn't, but the child is and is being delivered, this causes stillbirths and miscarriages and all of this stuff. And we haven't really known that. I would say not till the 20th century, but I'm sorry, I didn't look that up. Um, but you can all run to your <laughs> Google after this. Um, so she did produce a lot of children. It's for some reason they didn't make it 
you know, to maturity except for one. And um, so I think it's because of this Rh negative blood type. Now let's dig them up and test that DNA. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you'd prove it, but I think I th I would love to to prove that. I would love, or I would love to investigate that. It doesn't. I don't ever care. You know, nobody should ever care if they're wrong about a theory, but it's it's fun to kind of pursue these threads. And Hannah is probably like, well, what are you talking about? Let's bring me on for the health aspects of it. So let's bring her on for the health aspects of it. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> so let's talk I, about the pomegranate and the health properties of mm. the pomegranate. Well, you know, it's an interesting one to, to look at, actually, because it's not something that's made its way into into western herbal medicine um because it's actually um it's actually an ayurvedic um medicinal plant and quite a lot of so ayurvedic herbal medicine is um traditional um indian herbal medicine and quite a lot of um ayurvedic herbs have kind of made it into our you know into our medicine cabinets but pomegranate isn't really one of them so i was kind of scratching my head a bit and thinking mm -hmm. well well i wonder where to start so i went back to my history books and um there it was kind of talking about its digestive uses and going back to the kind of the times of dioscorides and pliny um it was the rind of pomegranates um, because pomegranate is, is quite astringent and drying, um, it used to be used for, um, we're going back to the bowels again, it used to be used for diarrhea and dysentery. Mm. Um, and then there kind of wasn't really a great deal else mentioned about it. And it's it has got other sort of historical uses noted, um, which would probably have been more use kind of back then when it was being written about as being really helpful for um, tapeworms and roundworms. Mm. But that's kind of where that sort of thread kind of went off. And then I went to my um, Ayurvedic texts. Oh. And um, it, that's where it starts getting a, a little bit more, a little bit more interesting. <laughs> Do you want me to go on? I do, absolutely. <laughs> I've already talked about the sexual aspects of it and, you know, blood type stuff. So let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's still used um, in Ayurvedic medicine for, you know, for those, those astringent drying uses. Um, and you, it's traditionally used in a, in a the, the rind is used in a decoction. So a decoction is like a long brood um herbal infusion so instead of you know pour, boiling a kettle and pouring it over and then letting it steep you put the plant matter in a saucepan and then you simmer it for about sort of 15 or 20 minutes so that's a decoction and you normally do that with with barks and seeds and more kind of tough plant matter that you need to kind of break mm. down a little bit so then it would be drank um to try and and astringe and dry and kind of take the take the diarrhea um down a bit but one thing i didn't know was that pomegranates have a use for the menopause oh and what's that in that um eating small amounts of pomegranates um can help to keep the estrogen levels a little bit more balanced okay which i didn't know um and also because pomegranates are quite I mean, we've spoken about this before, that different herbs have kind of heating and cooling, moistening, drying actions. So um, pomegranate is, is drying, obviously, but it's also cooling. So the, eating the fruit can help to, apparently, um, help to alleviate hot flushes. Wow. You know, that makes a lot of sense because, because they were a symbol of fertility because they look mm. like, you know, eggs in the... In the uh... <laughs> what is the word I'm looking for? Ovaries. Yeah. Ovary meat egg. Hello, Garrett. Okay, we are awake this morning. <laughs> um, and then, and then, so then to have uh, another use for that later on actually makes a lot of sense. And as I 
briefly mentioned before, but just to sort of distill that, it's also considered uh, a sort of Viagra for men. But what I find fascinating here is that you can use the rind too. And you had done a show with us that talked about citrus rinds. And mm. this is the part that people always throw away, you know, and, um, but every part you know, again, back to Friar Lawrence, every part cheers each part. Every part can be used for something. So that's absolutely fascinating. So I was going to try and demonstrate um, how to cut up a pomegranate because but one, I couldn't find one. And two, there are many, many uh, websites that you can Google and figure out how to cut it yourself. And a lot of people just sell the seeds and packages. But now that we know from Hannah that you can use the rind medicinally as well and healthfully as well, you might want to, you know, give it a shot cutting it up and decocting the rind, if you will, and and putting the seeds on your salad, on your fish. Um, I like to eat them because they, they have that crunch and fibrous mm. acid in the kernel. Shakespeare mentions them twice, once in Romeo and Juliet, which makes a lot of sense that you're having a, a sort of a sexual and also a fecundity reference she says about their first night together um don't leave don't leave you know it's not the lark the herald of the morn it is the nightingale nightly she sings on yond pomegranate tree mm. was the nightingale so she's talking about a night bird and the pomegranate tree now the pomegranate tree they're they're hard to find and when you see them they're quite startling because the the blossoms are very red orange and most frankly a little gaudy but but <laughs> they add a lot of color to your garden and i saw a huge blooming one in the chelsea physic garden which was amazing and um and the pomegranates too almost it almost looks like the the cover the the rind or whatever of the of the fruit can barely get over its seeds and it looks kind of bumpy and rumply. It's not perfectly smooth, you know? So anyway, so two mentions in Shakespeare. The other one is referring to the kernels and the kernels have another name too. I think it's Aram or something like that. But anyway, um, and they're very juicy and they're very delicious. Do uh, you guys, can you get them in Lincolnshire and do you put them in food? Uh, you, can, you can buy them in the supermarket. They're not something yeah. you would find on a farmer's market and certainly not something that, that, that grows up here. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, you can, you can get them. Okay. So that's our little quick and dirty take on quick and clean. I, just, I haven't used that in a long time. Anchoring in wisdom, anchoring in and healing and thinking about the whole part of the fruit and thinking about holistic uh why we do the brain's bard's brain body boost with peace proclaims olives of endless age looking for shakespeare all throughout your life anyway thank you so much for, for um filling out our pomegranate knowledge and we will see you in a couple of weeks see you and we'll see you sooner okay bye, bye.